All right, tuna hole marking time. Here we go. So our first one. And these are, of course, the crucial points. As long as our tuners line up and we've got the top of our headstock, then whatever happens down here is, you know, more or less up to luck. Okay, now I'll start designing the rest of the headstock. So now, we've got this, we've got a nice kind of sinuous shape here with a slight angle. This will probably curve around a little more in the final equation because this is going to be here. So I suspect that this corner will come off a bit more. And that gives us a nice looking headstock that's not quite Fender, not quite Gibson, just something all its own. And here we are, all laid out for cutting. Our neck shape, our headstock shape. Just a quick check to see that the tuners all fit and line up perfectly, which they do. It fits with the grain of the wood too, which is really, really nice. So now all I have to do is get a saw and cut this sucker out. Okay, now it's time for starting cutting out. And to do this, I'm going to start with something called a bow saw. Brilliant thing, keeps a, a blade under tension using a string. So I decide where my groove is going to be. And I start cutting. When we've cut down far enough, we can switch to a regular saw. Alright, here we have it, one base neck, roughly cut out, ready to go. I'll be shaping all of this with rasps and things and doing the sides with hand planes and all that stuff over the next day or two. <sighs> That's the hard work done. And now possibly the most important part of building, here is the coffee machine, Rancilio Silvia. You can see there a latte I've just made. The grinder is there, fresh beans, all ready to go. Well, you may have noticed by now that this build is not really a jazz base anymore. What I've done is I've taken that as my starting point and I'm designing the rest of it more or less by scratch. As I said, when I made the neck, I designed the headstock on the fly, I based everything around the measurements themselves. So I'm not really working from existing plans anymore. So I started with the jazz base body, but then I narrowed it a little and uh, sketched it on here. And I made a deeper horn um, and a you know slightly more offset waist. And I've got a different shape around here. And where the uh, neck is going to go in is also quite different. So by the time it's done, It'll really be, you know, quite a different guitar or a different bass. What I'm going to do now is get old school. This is a bit and brace. So I'm going to cut out my blank, but as a reference point, I'm going to start by drilling through this back using a Forstner bit. These things are great because they're self-guiding. The walls mean that you can go at well, pretty much 90 degrees to your workpiece. So they're really good to use. Right, I've drilled a couple of holes. Now it's time to go in and use my bow saw again. 
and basically go around carefully and cut out the body shape. Now it's time to uh, get the body into shape any way I can, and for that I'm going to use a variety of things. I like to use microplanes, um, flat and curved, Shinto rasp, which is a saw rasp, and block planes. This particular block plane is what's called a, a rebet plane, and it's made by Lee Nielsen. It's actually a beautiful thing. It's a gift, and it's one of my personal treasures. Right, well, we're basically there. It's a nice looking body blank. Um, there's quite a lot of finishing to do on the sides and you know, the body's gonna be contoured and the cavities need to be done. But that is our basic shape. So now we can go on and do some other work. And this is the ferrule. It's a tight fit, but it's a fit. So that's the size I need for these base holes. So it's time to drill those. You can see here the rig I use for drilling holes with hand tools. What I've got is my egg beater drill here and a kind of drill guide. And it goes in here, lines up with where I want it to go. And then I can turn it about there and I start drilling my hole carefully. And here we can see five holes. They go straight through. They're at 90 degrees. And when this gets planed, I'll be using these as a reference. This is just, just, just too small for this in the maple. But what I'll do is I'll actually put some dowel in and some sandpaper and just widen that enough. Now it's time to level off the top of the headstock so for that I'm going to use my favourite plane which is a number 4 and uh, this is a Stanley number 4 smoothing plane and basically take it down and then periodically check a little set square just to see how I'm doing ok so if we do a quick line up you can see that the tuners are sitting there nicely and in a dead straight line. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's actually a little frightening how fast a well-tuned plane will take off the wood. As well as the quality of the finish that it leaves behind, which is very high. it's time to thin the blank. So what I've done, it's, as you can see it's too thick, it's about 30 millimeters and it needs to be about 20. So I've drilled some holes here and these go down so that um, they're at 90 degrees so I know where my center line is and uh, when this face comes off they'll be barely visible where the truss rod needs to go. This will be in a different slot. What I'm using now is something called a grammel which is basically like a marking tool and I base it off the back and I run it simply along here and as you can probably see that gives me my cut line <laughs> 